live we back man welcome welcome back or just welcome if it's your first time here this is the golden goose dfs experience i'm your host chandler blakely aka goose we are the leaders in single entry three max and 20 max content but does not matter what style of contest you play if you play in nba dfs man you want to be subscribed you want to have your notification bell on trust me you will not be sorry man Hit that, do that right now. Also, while you edit, you're down there clicking buttons. Just scroll on over and click that like button for your boy. It's greatly appreciated. And it gets, and it gets good karma headed your direction early today or this afternoon. Whenever you see it, just hit that like button for your boy, man. I appreciate y'all so much. Thank you for all the views, likes, and comments. Keep them coming, man. I'm here. I answer questions in there, what I can answer for you. You know, so feel free to hit me up. Like I said, in the comment section on Twitter, does not matter. Uh, we got the starting fire ready for you. But before we do, man, you know, I got my lineup review going over my best lineup from yesterday's slate. Uh, disclaimer, this is my starting five. Well, I give you five plays on DraftKings and FanDuel. That's more than likely going to be in my player pool. I always say more than likely. Just because of injuries, late scratches, that sort of thing, all right? But let's get into it. You know I don't like to hold you long, man. I know y'all got other content to watch, other things to do. I try to get you in and out. I uh, got my best lineup pulled up from yesterday. A uh, rough day on both sites. Rough, rough day. Um, lost most of my buying on DK. We had to pay a little taxes. We've been on a bit of a hot streak over here. Got to pay a little taxes. Uh, the variance didn't quite go. Before I get into this breakdown, guys, if you had guys like Lonnie Walker yesterday, don't get upset, man. There's nothing you can really do about an injury, man. That's what they mean when they talk about variance. Variance is the things you can't account for, like foul trouble, guys getting injured. Maybe the coach just limited his minutes that night. Those are things that's out of your control. Don't beat yourself up over that. That was the story of my night, especially in my main single entry. I had two injuries. I had Lonnie Walker, well, basically three. Because if you don't know, Cam Johnson got a little banged up here and couldn't close out the game. He could have gave you a bigger score. So technically, I had three injuries in my main lineup. Cam Johnson, luckily, he gave us a, a good score before he exited in the fourth and couldn't close out the game. Lonnie Walker, hamstring got hurt. And I had Gary Trent Jr. He hurt his back. So my main single injury had Lonnie Walker and Gary Trent in there. When you got two guys that combine for six points, pretty much your night is over, man. Once I saw that, when I saw that Lonnie Walker injury, I'm like, okay, we still got a little life because I knew he was so high on that we still can find our way to the cash line. But once Gary Trent got injured in the second quarter and was done for the game, I knew my night was over, man. Like I said, if you got two guys, sometimes you can fail. Uh, in one spot, especially if a guy is super high on and still get there. But when, once you fell in like two spots, your, your, your night pretty much over, man, unless it's just some type of crazy night. So, uh, new was a wrap for me with them injuries. This is my highest scoring lineup right here. Uh, let's get into the breakdown. This was in the $5 single entry. Cam Thomas up top, man, 37% on. He had an okay game at 32 fantasy points. Got the Dennis Smith Jr. here at 6% on, man. 36 fantasy points. Very nice outing from him. Undoubtedly benefited from that Lonnie Walker injury. Uh, last night, man, uh, the guys we were high on, AD and Maxi. Uh, Maxi got in a little foul trouble early on, and by what I mean by early on is three fouls in the first quarter. So that really hurt his uh, first half run. Got back out there for the full run in the second half. I ain't going to complain too much because he still got the 30-plus minutes. Just didn't give us the score we needed. Didn't quite get in rhythm. But then with my main two pay-up options. Um, like I said, Dennis Smith Jr. here, just a low on play who, who was picking up a few minutes. And he just benefited from the Lonnie Walker injury. I kind of wanted to limit it. I told the gang last night, man, uh, we was getting a lot of lineups with like five nets and none. I didn't want more than four nets in a lineup. I thought... Four nets would be enough, and uh, it was, but we just didn't get the right combination of the nets. You needed, like, Smith, Johnson, Claxton, and uh, who else? Br well, Bridges had okay. You really only needed three, but that's neither here nor there. Dennis Smith was solid for us. Tobias Harris, man, once he got ruled in, I I, I liked him as well. I liked it Maxi and Harris yesterday. I know liked it ain't a word. Don't don't worry about this English, man. This ain't an English class. I liked it Maxi and Tobias Harris, man, if he played. Got to some Tobias Harris here. 28% on 39 fantasy points. Miles Bridges went back to that well. 
I was on. I, I told you yesterday. I like Brandon Miller. I like those Charlotte guys. The Lakers defense isn't that uh, amazing, and they can be had. So, got to some Miles Bridges. Definitely got to some Brandon Miller. I should have got to some more of them as he had a gave you a repeat of form, performance. But Miles Bridges was solid at fourteen percent, forty nine on. AD man, your highest scorer tonight. Absolutely cooked. You saw the video yesterday. You know I was on him, and and. I was still on the Luka fade train last night. Very little Luka, and I still played some Kyrie. He had a solid game for us. But AD out the gate, man, the monster, your highest score on yesterday. Slate 70 fantasy points from him in, in a nice triple-double outing against the Hornets. Lonnie Walker, 60% on. Hurt, uh, I think it was hamstring. It, like I said, just nothing you can do about that. 3.5 points from him. Oh, uh, Kong Wu here, 79%. Definitely a letdown, man. He... he Pretty much 5X, but you expected more from him in this spot against the Clippers, especially with the way this game finished. 149 to 144. Come on, Okongwu. Got to give us a little more than that at 79% on. Cam Johnson down here at 43% on. Nice night. He had a hot night shooting the ball. Hate he got injured and couldn't get that closing run. He could have probably dropped a 40-burger for us here in this spot at 5K. 293, my highest scoring line. Like I said, rough night on DK. Lost most of the buy-in over there. Those type of nights happen. We're going to shake it off. Uh, FanDuel, rough one over here on FanDuel. Maxi at the top, my guy, 40% on. As you can see, only 25 fantasy points. And Spencer Dinwiddie, man, is officially dead to me. Officially dead. I I gave him one more try, man, because I, I knew... Everybody was going to these nets, and nobody was going to Spencer Dinwiddie. So I left him in here. I was on the verge of taking him out, but I'm like, I'll give him one more try, and he just failed me once again. In big minutes, played like 37 minutes. He's just officially dead to me unless people are hurting out over here for the nets. My boy Brandon Podemski, 76% on, 32 fantasy points. Okay for him at his price tag. Here's the other injury I told you about right here. Gary Trent, man, thought he could be a sneaky value piece going against these Pelicans, but he hurt his back, and it was over with for him early too as well. Only three points from him hurt this lineup. Like I said, injuries hurt me a lot, man, and just – Variants, foul trouble for Maxi. Still had Bridges in here, 47. Both the Bridges in here. Uh, Miles Bridges, 46 fantasy points. Mikael Bridges with a letdown, 29 fantasy points in this spot. Went back to some P.J. Washington. He came through again with a nice solid effort, 33 fantasy points from him at 23% on. Okongwu here, 25, just not enough for his price tag. And then Jakob Pertl trying to get different with my centerpiece around here. He was okay, 32 fantasy points for him. Like I said, rough night overall. Had to pay a little taxes. When you when you go on a little winning streak, sometimes you got to pay a little taxes, give a little of that back. But let's get to this six games slate on DraftKings, seven games slate on FanDuel. So a slight difference between the two. DK dropped the latest game. FanDuel actually kept it. So they probably going to look a little different, but – that last game, that that uh Bucks Suns game, waiting on a lot of injury news on that Bucks side, so we have to see. But we'll talk about that when we get the fan duel. Let's talk about your starting five on DK at the top, man. I want to look at Jalen Green. Need I say much? They're playing the Pacers. You didn't heard me harp on that for the longest. But there's no Fred Van Vliet tonight, man. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do with that starting lineup. We definitely have to pay attention to it. But one thing is not going to change is Jalen Green being the primary scoring option, especially with no Fred Van Vliet over there. It's just going to be some extra shots to go around, extra uses. I'm taking Jalen Green, uh, pick up some more ball handling opportunities, which could lead to some more assist here. So that could really help his ceiling performance here. And Jalen Green typically is more of a scorer. Not really a lot of peripherals to go with it. Fred Van Vliet kind of handles that department. But maybe if he picks up extra ball handling duties with no Fred Van Vliet, that could uh, bring up his assist opportunity. So if he brings his scoring with a chance to get a few more peripherals, I'm going to love him here at 7,100, especially in the playing against the Pacers. I'm going to have plenty of Jalen Green tonight. He's probably going to be a little popular, probably garner a little ownership, but I'm perfectly fine with it. Dennis Smith Jr., 4,200. Now, we're waiting on some Nets injury news, but I'm anticipating Lonnie Walker being out, and we saw Dennis Smith Jr. pick up those minutes last time out. But you also get the caveat of Cam Johnson is questionable. He may be out. So you could get no Cam Johnson. 
No uh, Lonnie Walker here in this spot. Still waiting on Ben Simmons news. That could affect some of his play if he comes back. But we definitely got to wait on that news. But with the way he's playing, man, the way he played the other day, he's been solid in his 20 minutes off the bench. Had a very solid game last night. I definitely got my eye on him right here with all those injuries. We're going to have to pay attention to the news. But I definitely think Dennis Smith Jr. is in play, all right? So it could be if Cam Johnson sits. And Ben Simmons plays, maybe he starts there, but I don't think Ben gets big minutes. I think Dennis Smith Jr. season increased the minutes. Hopefully he can get 25 to 30 here in this spot, and I like the price tag on him at 4200 At the small four, it could be Cam Whitmore season. He should pick up more minutes with no Fred Van, with no Fred Van Vliet over here. Now we gotta see what they do with the starting lineup. Maybe they bring in Amin Thompson, or uh, I, I think they got the other Holiday over there. We don't know who they're gonna start at point guard, but it's a lot of ways they can go with it. They could bring Amin Thompson, let him start at the, one of the back courts, or they could just bump Jalen Green to the point. Move Dylan Brooks to the two. Let Cam Whitmore start at the two or three. However they want to do it. It's a lot of ways they can go with this starting lineup. But no matter how they do it, I think Cam Whitmore sees increased minutes. He's been playing well off the bench. I know you've been seeing the highlights if you've been watching. But he's been playing very solid. He's definitely the number one candidate to pick up minutes here, in my opinion, with with no Fred Van Vliet. I could be wrong, but we'll see. Cam Whitmore is probably going to go on some ownership. He's definitely going to get big-time ownership if he moves into the starting lineup. But definitely get you some Cam Whitmore in this great game environment against the Pacers. At the power forward spot, I want to look at Carl Anthony Towns. Price is coming back down on him, 7900 in a spot here against the Chicago Bulls. A pace down spot for him, but the thing I'm looking at here it could be fed through him a little more. Now, we're going to need some Bulls news. If Alex Caruso plays, I definitely, definitely love Carl Anthony Towns because Caruso playing means some better on-ball defense against Anthony Edwards. Not saying he can stop Anthony Edwards. Edwards can get his shot off against anybody and have a good game, but a tough defender like Alex Caruso definitely could bother him a little bit. Maybe he'd defer on a few more possessions. Whereas a guy like Cat Carl Anthony Towns just has – the, the Bulls don't have a body they could throw on him down there. Vooch is going to be over there with Gobert out the picture. Even if he wasn't, they wouldn't put Vooch on Carl Anthony Towns. I don't know who they start at this power forward to put on Towns. If the Minnesota Timberwolves are smart, man, they should feed Towns as he's going to have a mismatch no matter who they start. They just don't have the size – to contend with them up there. I like Carl Anthony Towns in this spot, man. Hopefully he can have a big one for us at 7,900. He should just be able to have his way down low. Sign me up for Cat here, all right? Then at the center, man, I want to look at John Collins. Now, I know I told you in the past, the only guy's minutes I'm confident in is Laurie Marketing. So, that's really like the only jazz player I play on a consistent basis. But I want to look at John Collins, John Collins here, I'm sorry, because the minutes have been there in close games. In close games, um, he's getting 30 minutes. And I definitely see this as being a close game. I don't think they're not blowing out this Oklahoma City Thunder team. So, should be a close game. I'm expecting 30 minutes from John Collins. Definitely. Definitely should be live for a double-double as Chet Holmgren is not a very uh, dominant rebounder down there. He should be able to get on the glass here. He's live for a double-double in this spot. I like the price tag at 6100 Sign me up for some John Collins, all right? There you have it, man. Your starting five for DraftKings, Jalen Green, Dennis Smith Jr., Cam Whitmore, Carl Anthony Towns, and John Collins, man. Get you some exposure to these guys. Get them in your player pools. I'm for sure going to have them in mind, all right? Let's go look at FanDuel and see what I'm liking over there. FanDuel at the top, man. He's your thumbnail. It's not going to change. Give me Jalen Green once again. It should absolutely be his show. And this Pacers matchup that's going to push the ball, man. I'm expecting a big one from Jalen Green. A lot of people probably are. Like I said, he's going to go on some ownership, but we'll get different somewhere else. Don't even worry about it. At the shooting guard over here, I want to look at Josh Green for the Dallas Mavericks, man. I've played him the last couple of games. He has been shooting the ball extremely well, man. He's playing solid. I like him for a value piece at 4900 Going against this Brooklyn Nets team, second night of a back-to-back, -back, maybe they rest Luka here, you know what I mean, against these Nets. I don't know, but I'm probably still on the fade Luka train again, if you're wondering. I have no problem going back to Kyrie. And I definitely want to get to some Josh Green with the way he's been playing and shooting the last couple of games. I like this price tag. I like the matchup against the Nets. At the small forward, staying with Cam Whitmore. Price is way up over here. 
uh, $1,100 more expensive. But like I said, it's potential that he could move into the starting lineup. But even if he doesn't, he still he should see an uptick in minutes. And, wh- and with the way the kid this kid has been playing, he loves to play in transition. He's always out running. You see all his highlights, his transition dunk. So this game should bode well for him against an Indiana, t- Indiana team who loves to push the pace and get easy buckets in transition. This could be a great up and down matchup for a guy like Cam Whitmer who has a chance to start, but at the very minimum, he's going to see more minutes. Sign me up for Cam Whitmore at 5,700. At the power forward, staying in that same game, I don't mind going to the other side to Pascal Siakam. 8,300. He really has to be like the primary weapon for this Pacers team since Halliburton's on limited minutes. We already know Halliburton's going to play about 20, 22 minutes, nothing more, nothing less. They want him to uh, be eligible for his all-star and first-team NBA, all that type stuff. So he's playing limited minutes. So Siakam should be able to be the primary scorer for this Pacers team. He's highly involved. He's another guy who loves to play in transition. So I like getting to Pascal Siakam here at 8,300. And then at the center spot, man, staying with my boy Carl Anthony Towns. $200 more expensive. I know nobody's really going to be on him here in this spot. He let you down last time out, man. I expect to bounce back from him here. He just didn't shoot the ball well last game. I expect them to get going here against this Bull team that I have no fear of their defense at all. All right? There you have it, man. You're starting five for FanDuel. Carl Anthony Towns, Pascal Siakam, Cam Whitmore, Josh Green, and Jalen Green, man. Get you some exposure to these guys. Get them in your player pools. They for sure going to be in mine, all right? That's going to do it for us here today, man. Y'all know questions, comments, or concerns. You just want to say what's up. Leave it in the comment section. You know I reply when and where I can, all right? Y'all know my motto, man. Chances make champions. Y'all green up. I'll catch y'all next time, all right? Let's get it.